I'm Arielle, and I'm going to tell you about my situation, and I live in the United States, and I am disabled, and I want people to know why I do not have my basic needs met, and I can't get a place to live. So I am on federal disability, that is social security disability. I got it about nine years ago. It's extremely difficult to get. Most pe Many people get denied. Um, I get a monthly income. That amount is low because I got disabled at about 28, so I did not have much time to pay into it. Just because I got disabled early does not mean that I don't need help. Just because I didn't have a long time to pay into it doesn't mean our society shouldn't give me a place to live or basic needs. So my total income is less than the average monthly rent for an apartment in my area of California. It's even higher in other areas and the average is even higher, but mine is about my income is about 85% of the amount the average amount of a one bedroom apartment rent. So there's no way I can get a regular apartment. I am on every program that I can be on. So I have that monthly income. Well, I have tried to get affordable housing. So low income housing, subsidized housing. Well, it's good that we have it. However, in my situation, the only affordable housing in my area that is available has requirements to qualify where you have to make one and a half times the rent. Well, for me, my income is not enough to qualify for me to get a one bedroom apartment in low income housing. So that leaves me with no options. That leaves me with what to do. The other programs that are, you get more help. The, uh, all the wait lists in my area are closed. They are closed in two thirds of the counties in California. Uh, once you get on those wait lists in this area, the person I know who got it, it took 12 years. So that's not an option. That doesn't give you a place to live for the next 12 years. And that's if you get on the waiting list, which they're closed indefinitely right now. So that leaves me with no options except to get help. So there are many people in my position who don't have anyone to help them. I am extremely privileged that I have had people in my life who have been willing to give me resources, uh, food, a place to live, covering some medical expenses. Like, it would not be possible for me to have a place to live without their help. So that's a fundamental flaw in our program. In, in the whole program, our society should take care of people. I got sick. I didn't do anything wrong. I deserve to have a place to live. Just because I'm disabled doesn't mean I don't deserve to have my basic needs met. Other things that are factors, besides just the housing, because I managed to share a two-bedroom apartment in low-income housing. So I that is makes it more possible for me to have housing. The problem is that when you also add in utilities, food, and medical expenses. That is more than my monthly income. So those are very basic expenses. And that leaves me without being able to survive, even sharing an apartment in low-income housing. So the only options I have to survive off my income is to live with friends or family. That is not always an option. That's not always a good option. And like I said, many people, they don't have anyone to do that for them. I am so scared sometimes that I can't sleep because I have no security. There is no way that I know I'll be okay. If I don't get help, I don't have a place to live. If the people in my life who are helping me can't for any reason, if they get sick, if they get in a car crash, anything, I don't have a place to live. I would be homeless. 
like I said, it depends on the kindness of other people to give me my basic needs. And like I said, that doesn't even include the other expenses. My medical expenses, I'm on federal and state health care. It doesn't cover all my doctors. It doesn't cover all my necessary medications. I would be having seizures if I didn't pay for it. That is unacceptable. The last time I was having seizures, I ended up in ICU and I almost died. So that's not an option. So where does that leave me? I have to pay medical expenses. I have to pay for food. I'm on food stamps. SNAP. They give you an amount that is less than the amount recommended by the USDA for anywhere in the country. In California, it's more expensive. Well, they don't even give you enough. So part of my income goes to food. The, it's also about half, less than half of the amount of the average person what they spend in California on food monthly is what I get. So that's, that's not enough. I also have uh, in-home supportive services through the county, so I have a caregiver. If I did not have a caregiver, I wouldn't be able to live alone at all. So then where does that leave me? I couldn't pay for a caregiver anyway. So even if I move in with friends and family, I can't pay for a caregiver. So where does that leave them? Well, they have to be home to take care of me. Where does that leave them? They can't work. This is an impossible situation. It's an impossible system. The only way that I have my basic needs met is by help from other people. And like I said, not everybody has that. There are plenty of people who are disabled who don't have an, what they need. Like I said, I have federal health care, state health care. I have food stamps. I have low income housing. I have federal disability. And this is my situation. It, it's impossible. And I don't think people just because they're disabled should be in an impossible situation. I would be homeless if I don't have help. That is a very scary thing. It is also very insecure even to live in and share an apartment. If the person moves out and I can't pay the whole rent, then I'm homeless. If my family doesn't want to give me a place to live, then I'm homeless. What if they don't have room? What if, I mean, it's, it's not okay to not be able to have your basic needs met and just because you become disabled. I do not believe that you should have to have worked for 40 years to be able to make it because that's just not, was not possible for me. I'm sick. I can't work. That leaves me in this situation. And like I said, I don't believe anyone deserves this. So I hope your actions represent your beliefs of what you think people deserve in terms of creating programs that support those of us who are disabled and need help.